Could what I'm about to show you be the future of the web? We started with websites, now we're turning those into MCP servers, but what if those MCP servers could return UI components? Well, that's the goal of MCP UI. I must admit, when I first saw it, I was pretty skeptical, but then I saw companies like Shopify get excited about it and tools like Goose start to implement it. So I decided to take a closer look and I think I get it now. I can see a world where this is the future of how we use the web. So let me show you MCP UI and you can decide if it's the future. I'll start with a demo of what MCP UI is trying to solve and why Shopify specifically are on board. If we go into an AI chat app, in my case, I'm using Goose here, and we try and do some shopping. Yes, you might not be doing that now, but again, imagine this in the future. We could say something like, what shirts can I buy? And then the website that we want to buy them from. In this case, this is my shirt website. That will happily go off and scrape the website for you, but then it simply returns a wall of text. The text is correct. We do have two shirts available on this website and the price is correct. And all of the information there is also correct, but it's a pretty terrible shopping experience. We don't do things like this through text. We didn't invent JavaScript and CSS to go all the way back to text files. So now let's try buying some shirts again, but this time from my MCP server that has MCP UI. In this case, I'm simply going to say I want to buy some shirts from Better Swag, as that should run my MCP server. As you can see, it's running a tool called Buy Shirt on my MCP server, and that is returning a UI component. Now this UI component is controlled by me. This is my website and I've written the code for this component. Now obviously I'm no shopping UI wizard. You can already see this is going to be a much better experience than a wall of text. We have this proper variant picker down here, which is actually updating the image. And it would also update this stock indicator with whether there's stock for each individual variant. And this information is coming directly from my website. So we know it's going to be up to date. Now that's not all there is to the MCP UI spec. We can also enable communication between the UI component and the client itself. So in this case, Goose. Now we are very early to this. So Goose hasn't implemented all of the methods. What we can do is if I click the add to cart button, this will go ahead and add it to my server or the database, wherever we're doing that. But what you saw is it automatically sent a prompt to my client saying add to cart. And this has now run a second MCP tool that I have called checkout. And this is another UI component I have. Now the MCP UI spec does have a way to automatically send tool calls as well. So we wouldn't need that prompt. But as I said, we're very early and Goose hasn't implemented that. So I think that's one of the easiest examples to understand what MCP UI is trying to solve. And there are tons more use cases that I can start to think of as well as the pros and cons of this approach. But I'll answer all of those in a bit. For now, let's just check out the code as it is super simple and it relies on a technology invented in 1997 for Internet Explorer. I'm not kidding. We'll start on the MCP server. Now, one really cool thing about MCP UI is it's simply just an add-on on top of the MCP SDK from Anthropic. So everything you're seeing here is simply just a normal MCP server. And the only code that's actually related to MCP UI is this single import that we have here. And that has enabled us to have those UI components that we saw in the earlier demo. If I go down to one of our tool calls here, in our case, buy shirt, that actually did return a UI component. The only code here related to MCP UI is simply this block. This is creating a UI resource, which we then return as content from this MCP tool. If I zoom in far enough then, this is all the code that is MCP UI specific. All we're doing is creating a UI resource using the create UI resource function that we imported from MCP UI. We give this a custom URI. Then we have the content itself, which defines what the component is. Here we have a type which is set to external URL at the moment. There are two other types. Then we simply pass it an iframe URL and what website that iframe should be. That is how simple it is. It literally is just a website in a sandboxed iframe. That means that this component itself can be anything from plain HTML to jQuery to Next.js and anything in between. If I actually open up the link that I was using as an iframe, you can see that all I've done here is at slash shirts, I've extracted a piece of my larger UI into its own page. And that way we can use this as an iframe as a smaller individual component. I could have technically iframed the entire site that we have here, but that's not the idea of MCP UI. The idea is that you break your UI down into smaller individual pieces. So the AI is only showing what's necessary. Otherwise you've essentially just got a glorified browser. Back on the MCP server code, as I mentioned, there are two other methods that we can use besides that iframe and external URL. One of them is raw HTML, where we can just pass this HTML string, and this will then be rendered on the client. But I think you only really need this if you want something super simple and you don't need a whole website set up for it. The final type you can use is remote DOM. You can see here we send over a remote DOM script, which is simply some JavaScript and also the framework that we're going to be using. Now, if you're confused what remote DOM is, same. I had a quick look at it and it's actually a project from Shopify themselves. And I won't go into too much detail as it's very complex. And to be honest, I don't fully understand it yet. It probably needs its own video, but essentially its goal is to have a way where the code that defines the UI and actually has all of the data runs in a restricted sandbox environment while the rendering of the UI is still done on the client. 
As I said, super complex stuff, so subscribe if you'd want to see a video on that. For now, I'd probably just stick to using external URL and an iframe link as it is the simplest way. Literally, all you need is a website. In my case, I built that with Tanstack Router. This is the slash shirts page we were taking a look at earlier. And for the most part, this is a plain React component. The only code in here that's related to MCP UI are actually custom helper functions. There is no MCP UI package that you need to have on your website. One of them that we have is a use MCP UI init hook. I'll show you what that does in a bit. And also a send MCP message function. This was how earlier when we clicked the add to cart button, it sent a prompt to my client, which in my case was Goose, that automatically added the prompt add to cart. Now, if we go into the use MCP UI init hook, you don't have to worry too much about the detail in here. One of the things this is doing is also notifying the client of the document size. So it says, what is the size of the current page that we're on? And it sends that over to the client, again, in my case, Goose, and that automatically sizes the iframe so it looks nice to the user. Now, if we go down to the send message function. You can see this is essentially doing the same thing by posting a message. But first, we do check that we are in an iframe. So you can also have this code running on your normal site, and that way it won't run into any errors. Now, for actually sending the messages to the client, all we're doing is just using normal web tech. We're doing window.parent.post message, which is how in a normal iframe you send a message to the parent. So we're taking advantage of existing technologies. So that's a first look at MCP UI. Do check out that documentation if you want to see more demos and code examples. Now for my thoughts on whether this is the future or not, here's why I think it could be. One of the key problems this solves besides having a nicer user experience is keeping brand identity. If I'm Apple, Amazon or Nike, I don't really want people shopping through ChatGPT and everything being in text and me not having any of my custom branding. It also means that those user experience designers that spent years competing to create a better user experience still have their jobs and we haven't replace them with simple text. It also enables more complex experiences. I can imagine this being used for a seat selector at a concert, or maybe even putting a game within a chat app. The only part that I'm skeptical about on all of this is whether OpenAI would actually implement this. I think there is a world where they would do this for their approved integrations. It's almost like creating a new app store like Apple's, and the cynic in me says they'd probably try and take a cut out of each purchase made through it. So there we go. I really am curious what you think about all of this and any potential use cases you can see for this. So let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.